All right, so in this video, we're going to see how do we going to set up the WooCommerce API. WooCommerce comes with an API with a RESTful API that we can use to access our site information. We can place order, check order, create user products, uh, uh, a lot of things. We're going to see what are some of the features. And it, it's really good to enable this and to have it set up because when we're automating, the front end and back end testing usually goes to hand to hand, right? You do something in the front end and then you want to check the back end so you can use the api to check the back end or you can go of course you can go to the database and read but you can also use the api plus when you want to practice back end testing when you're trying to learn api testing or back end testing it's good to have um, an api that you have access to the back end so there's a lot of public apis you can use to practice but those you can just make a call but and you can validate the response but you cannot actually go to the database and make sure the API did what it's supposed to do. So having your own API to be able to test that is great. Another thing is you can use it for load testing. You can run a, a load test against your own little server so you don't have to affect anybody else's website. All right, so the first step is, the first step is let's Google. I was gonna show you how to do it, but if you just type WooCommerce API, they do have a pretty decent documentation, pretty good documentation, I should say. I, I would go to the first one, docs.woocommerce.com. This one have documentation on how to set it up on the front end. All right. And then there, there is a Python library. There's different libraries. I, I'm a Python person, so I like Python. We're going to use Python. And also there is the actual endpoints documentation is here. If you look, click on the first link, and there is a documentation on the actual APIs. These are all the APIs. Uh, it has information about authentication. Then there is the, all the endpoints. There is several endpoints for orders, like getting order information, creating an order, list of orders. Uh, there is, let's say, products. Under products, there is an API to get a product information, to create a product. Um, let's see. So there should be something for reports. There should be something for users somewhere. Uh, so uh, they have a very uh, robust API, and it's really awesome to be able to have access to this and practice backend testing with this, with the with their APIs. All right. So let's go back to our backend, and the way we set it up is again we go to WooCommerce and Settings. Under here, there's an Advanced tab. So click on the Advanced tab, and there's a few more options. It looks like a breadcrumb, but they're almost like tabs. There's one that says REST API. Click on that. There's a legacy API that's going to be gone soon. So in fact, by the time you watch this video, this legacy API might not be there. So don't worry about that. So since I haven't created any API keys, there's, there's nothing here. So click on API key, either the big button here or add a key. So API keys, if you don't know what those are, those are basically like passwords, like username and passwords. All right, so the description is, I just call it test key. And who the user for is admin. And I want to give it read and write access because if you just give it write access, you're probably just going to make a get calls that gives you information. Read is you can like endpoints like create order or create user or create a product. Uh, to be able to do that, you need a write access. All right, so click on generate keys. And now you have the key and the secret, the consumer key and the consumer secret okay so copy this into a notebook some kind of uh, notes copy it here that's the key and this is the secret all right so now it's done because once you leave from here you won't be able to see that but you can generate as many as possible and you don't want to share that with anybody if you're actually doing this on a on a live server where people can access it you can you should definitely not show that api key and secret okay I'm, i just showed it here because it's my local thing and this is going to be gone by the time i even publish this course all right so now the api key is generated and we want to test it out we're going to test it out with two different ways one we're going to test it with python and two we're going to test it with postman way maybe in uh, reverse order okay so let's go ahead and uh test it with postman if you don't know what postman is postman is a tool used to to make uh RESTful HTTP, well, I wouldn't say RESTful, but HTTP calls. It's very popular. Anybody should, everybody should have it. That's one of the toolboxes uh, that any developer should have. I'm pretty sure most of you guys are familiar with Postman. If you don't, just download it. 
and let's go and see how to use it. All right, so we're going to see what how to use Postman basically. This is what Postman looks like. I have some collections already, so yours might look a little bit different, and plus, depending on the version, it might look a little bit of a little bit different. But for the most part, they keep the UI consistent with every update, so it's going to look like this. You won't have this collections here because this is a collection of other requests that I've saved. You can make a call and you can save it so next time you don't have to type it all over again. So what you want to do is start with a plus sign here. This is basically like a form that you use to make the API call. There is a different methods here, get, post, put, and blah, and more. Um, so we're just going to try a get call to start with. So let's go to the documentation and get get one endpoint. Let's say, let's start with the products. That's a good one. Since we already have a bunch of products, we should get a, a response. So let's uh, let's look at retrieve product, list all, list all products. Let's look at list all products. So this is the endpoint, right? So we're gonna put that here, but we need the actual, uh, our website, right? If you have it in the server, it's gonna be HTTP something, HTTPS something. In our case, our site is gonna be my local my store dot local. All right, so we just type that in here. So this is going to be the full URL. And if I make a call, I should. Sorry, you don't have. You do not. You cannot list resources. Basically, access denied. So if you look at the documentation, the documentation says to use um, basic basic auth, and you can use username and password. This is it remembers from my practice earlier. Uh, the documentation says to, to use the key here and the secret here, but that's not going to work because our site is HTTPS. I mean, it is HTTP and not HTTPS. And this basic art only works for HTTPS, okay? So what we want to do is use this art 1.0. And uh, let me get what I saved here. So this is my key. When it says consumer key, put in your key. Where it says consumer secret, put in your secret. Okay, that's it. You don't need to fill out the rest of this. And click on send. That should work. Voila. See, this is a response. So this is all the request on top. And at the bottom, it shows you the response. So 200 means okay. Everything is good. That's the start of the rest, uh, st the HTTP status code. 200 means everything went okay. And it's a JSON response. And you can see it's a bunch of products. So as you can see, it's a list, so it's a list of projects. If, if I collapse this, collapse this, collapse that, there is a bunch of products. For example, this one is ID31. Our page is not going to show us the ID, but name is T-shirt with logo. Let's uh, copy this name. Let's go to our, our site. And we should see, if I do Control F, and there's a t-shirt with logos, 18 bucks. So this is the product, right? So if we go back here, we have the price, 18 bucks, regular price, 18 bucks, sale price. 18, uh, it's, not on, it's not on sale, right? We just saw that. It's on real price. So we just tested out our API keys work. We made a we made an API call to our to our server, to our site, and it worked. Uh, products, let's do orders and make the same call and voila we should have three orders right we created three sample orders so far and this is giving me a lot of information but it's all json so you need to basically parse parse this all right all right so we've tested the api works it's all good to go now let's just try it with python real quick and we are done with setting up all the api and testing it Okay, now we're going to test out the making the API call with our Python script. So we're just going to create a simple basic script and make the call and make sure we can do it. All right, so I'm in my terminal. Let me just make make a directory. Make dir test WooCommerce. I'll just call it test Woo, cd test Woo, touch API test.py. I'm just going to use Sublime. Sublime is really good when you're working on like one-off scripts. All right, so let's go back to the site. Here at the bottom, 
there is a list of libraries so let's click on python so this pypy page will give us a lot of information but if you also go to the official documentation there is under the python section for every call there is examples of the request the authentication the response and everything but here is easier and let's just copy paste this into our python file well we're gonna to have to install it and now let's replace the secret and the key this is a key this is a secret and let's go to postman and let's get the uh, our entire url actually let's just get the name of the host all right so this is the name of the host here and go back to the site here should be examples of how to make the call there you go and we're going to just going to print print response.json okay so if we run this if, we, if i try to run this right now it's not going to work because woocommerce is not installed oh it actually did not complain interestingly oh go ahead and save it there you go no no module named woocommerce so I'm doing this on purpose. I could have prepared the virtual environment and everything, but I just wanted to show you. If I can install work, work, WooCommerce right now, it's going to install on my system, which I don't want to do. So virtual environments are always a great things to do. So I will do which Python 3, just so I can use it. Virtual env dash dash Python. And this is a Python I want to use. And my env is a full, the name of the virtual environment I want to create. So it just created a virtual environment for me. Well, it's creating it right now. And I'm going to activate it. Source my env bin activate. And now I can do pip install WooCommerce. All right. So what I did is I created a virtual environment, I activated it, and I installed in WooCommerce. And how did, if you have any difficulty, this page actually shows you what to do and a lot more information about the API. Now let's just run it. Python API test.py. Voila. So it's uh, printed out. This is, remember, I have print r, print r.json. This is all uh, all the products. That's why it's a lot of stuff uh, printed here. I can do orders. Shouldn't be not quite as much. And there you go. Print. Oh, I didn't save it. So that's still doing. Uh, products this is orders orders is not that bad uh, one trick we can do a pretty print if you don't know about pretty prints pretty cool you can import p print and you can do p print p print and this will do a pre pretty print so I'll run the script again I'm surprised they didn't do it but oh I didn't save it this is what I hit sublime sometimes it doesn't auto save okay then they printed it in a pretty way so now we know we can make an api call from our python script that's the main thing i wanted to show you guys so our site is good to go uh, the api is set up we can we we can create as many uh, key, keys if we want to but all you need is one unless you have multiple users all right